Hi, I'm Ryan, and today I'm going to show you how to add a battery pack to your mini arcade. Around the same time I conceptualized the mini arcade kits, having a battery pack was also in the back of my mind. Having a portable small arcade via battery powered fits very well with the size. I get asked this question, how would I make the arcade battery powered a lot? And I finally made a solution I'm happy with. I first experimented with this idea when I got new lithium ion batteries for my cordless drill. Sticking to being practical, I wanted to avoid additional costs. Why not expand upon the use of cordless drill batteries many of us might have instead of buying some nameless battery pack? Disclaimer. Yes, there are many battery packs out there, ideally power banks for your cell phone, tablet, and others better suited for this application. I'm only showing one way to execute a battery pack in a broad sense that hopefully illustrates the methods to incorporate other types of battery packs you might want to use. You could use or make a custom battery pack, upcycle a laptop battery, the list goes on. This isn't the best solution, but it was the most cost effective for me, so deal with it. My first idea with a battery pack was upcycling my old nickel cadmium charger that's now useless and making a portable power brick with these. It's a novel solution, but not really practical as it's cumbersome to have to be tethered to a battery pack versus having the battery pack integrated into the unit in question. So this idea just kind of sat there. I mean, it had some use as it could be stuffed in my suitcase boom box, but that didn't add any value to the common conception of battery power devices. Our overarching goal is to attach the cordless drill battery to the arcade and make it easy to remove the battery for recharge or swap with a fresh battery. The biggest hurdle when using a cordless battery pack outside the drill is the awkward connection molded within the battery's plastic design. I started by taking a photo from top-down perspective, dropped that into a CAD program, and drew around the battery connector to scale. I took that 2D drawing and extruded it to a 3D model. Tapping into the battery's terminals was done by drilling a small hole and using a number 4 machine bolt screwed into the sides. The screw would be self-threaded in the smaller hole, giving me room to adjust the contacts to get to the battery's positive and negative terminals. That was the hardest part. I played with mounting the battery and just went with something simple shown by this first mock-up. Now our two main problems arise. Number one, the battery outputs a native 18 volts while the arcade needs 12 volts input. The battery actually outputs a range of 20.5 volts to 15.6 volts. For this battery, that's full charge to near dead. Our second problem is we also need a way to see when the battery is approaching dead or its built-in shutoff. We want to avoid interrupted power loss where worst case scenario, our Raspberry Pi inside this arcade is reading or writing to the SC card and we lose power due to a dead battery. We want to be able to see when the battery is low and have time to turn the arcade off properly. The solutions for these two problems are 1. Use a voltage regulator on the input and 2. Use a voltmeter to monitor the battery's level. We will also add a double pull, double throw switch to be able to use the arcade with either a battery pack or an AC adapter. We can open up the inside of the arcade and see what additional wiring is required to add a battery pack. We can disconnect the rear panel because I try to make this an all-in-one modification that if you don't want to do it, just replace the rear with something pre-cut. It looks a little complicated just because the wires are not cut to their proper length and they're all over the place. But the circuit is very straightforward because we're using pre-assembled devices that were purchased on eBay. Note that the total cost of this modification is under $11 because we A, already had the battery pack, and B, we're just buying cheap pre-assembled made circuits found on eBay. So this is just a connection of the battery with the regulator and the voltmeter. Note that I had to desolder some Molex connectors on the regulator just because I wanted the regulator to fit flush into the, the rear of the cabinet so everything would look like a clean install. The burning question here is how long does this battery last in our arcade, or my arcade at least? For this build, I have a Raspberry Pi 2 inside the arcade cabinet. And if we look closely at the battery in question, it's 24 watt hours. So if we look at the wattage consumed by the arcade, we can get about three hours runtime from a raw calculation. But we have to assume that the DC step-down converter is 80% efficient. That's 
a, a good number for this case since we're going from 18 to 12 volts. And at that efficiency, we get about two hours and 24 minutes of runtime, which is not bad for a battery that I had laying around for other uses. Now, I've tested this with a Raspberry Pi 1 installed in an arcade cabinet with the same internal guts monitor and audio amplifier. And I got about two hours and 45 minutes with the volume set on almost a whisper, so you could maybe play it in a library. So this calculation isn't that bad for what we're using with a Pi 2. Now, if that's not enough, there are different batteries available for this Ryobi cordless drill set. And if we look on Amazon, we can see a plus high capacity four amp hour battery. Now, taking that and converting it to what the working voltage is on the battery, we can get 72 watt hours, and we can use the same calculations with 80% efficiency, and this would give us roughly seven hours, 23 minutes runtime, which not bad for a battery pack. So some final thoughts on this installation. I would have preferred if the battery pack mounted flush or a little bit closer to the arcade rear, but that's because if I didn't modify this battery pack, there's a small little tab on it for whatever reason that interferes with how it fits. And you could easily cut that off and fix that problem. The only other issue is the battery level which is indicated by the voltmeter on the back of the cabinet, isn't super useful when you're playing from the front and you have to turn it around every time to see the battery status. That could be easily fixed by putting this voltmeter on the front, but I didn't really want to mess up any aesthetic things by putting a weird digital meter on the front. Other than that, that's all I really had. What's happening? I'm so sweaty.